Hi, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Quinn and I run a small business called Cat Cake Crochet. I guess I can officially say that I run a small business now instead of I'm trying to because I had my first market. Yeah! So what this video is going to be is me from the future, which is now talking about the past, which was the footage that I will show and doing commentary on it. Hopefully that makes sense. This is a little quinception. Yes, I did think that joke was funny and I am going to include it in this video. While I've been editing the footage from my market, which I'm currently doing right now on my iPad, I, I just decided I'm just not gonna show a lot of the footage that I had recorded last week because honestly, I was in a really negative headspace and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact I wasn't getting any sleep at all because my daughter was so incredibly fussy last week. I don't know if that she's, I don't know if it's that she's having a growth spurt or a developmental leap, but she has not been sleeping and she's not been taking her naps. And I think it was like emotionally taking a toll on me last week. So I, so every time that I sat down to record my thoughts about the upcoming market or show what I was currently working on, I was just, I was just like not happy. I was just a very crabby patty. And I had received the vendor map a few days before the market and I noticed immediately that I was right next to another crochet person. I did film my reaction to finding out I was going to be ne right next to another crochet person for my first show and it was not good. I reacted negatively and that's not fair because that other person enjoys crocheting just as much as I do and everybody deserves a shot to show what they can do. I think I just had it in my mind that my first show was going to go so smoothly and so perfectly because I had been planning for so long what exactly I was going to do. And like all good plans, some things went wrong. So my plan was that the night before my show, I was going to individually photograph all of my items. I was going to finalize my price sheet. I was going to be writing on chalkboard signs that I had purchased from the Dollar Tree, the prices of the items that weren't individually tagged. And I was going to paint my price sign for my flowers. Well, what ended up happening is that for the two days before the market, my daughter just refused to go to sleep for two nights. And each time I laid her down in her crib, she only would go to sleep if I laid next to her in my bed. And so I was pre feeling pretty stressed out. I felt like there was a lot of last minute things that I wanted to do that I didn't get a chance to do. And I was also relying on the time when I would be alone at the market to be able to get some of those things done. So let's talk about the things that I did do. So I spray painted the towel holder that I thought was a toilet paper holder. So thank you for correcting me. I spray painted that black with just some random spray paint that I happen to have in my garage. I had a black, a matte finish and a terracotta brown, which the terracotta was actually very beautiful. And I used that to spray paint the glass vases that I had put my flowers in. So I realized that I needed to spray paint the, the vases that the flowers were in because my flowers were so heavy that the vases were falling over with just even when I had them set up in my house. So what I did is I went outside and I stole some rocks out of my neighbor's yard and I spray painted the vases that terracotta color. So I know I mentioned it briefly on this channel. I think it was like maybe even in my first video that I used to be a sales representative for a handmade giftware company. That giftware company made like kitchen towels and aprons and tote bags. And I was a sales representative that would travel across America to trade shows in Atlanta, Georgia, and Dallas. And I would help do setup and make the displays, do tear down, pack everything up. And I would sell the products at those shows. And then I'd go home to California and make those products in the factory to ship them out to customers. So I was familiar already with setting up a display and like how to do varying heights, um, rule of threes and fives to keep um, things grouped in odd numbers and how you should treat customers and how you should act at shows, you know, not being on your phone, trying to, to stand when you can, having a big smile on your face, being ready to talk about your product. And I felt like I was kind of used to doing that because a lot of the products that I used to sell were handmade. So it just felt different this time because I'm representing myself and my own products. But one thing I was really nervous about was the money aspect of it because doing trade shows, I never dealt with people's cash or their cards. Like I took down their credit card information, but I never like, I never used a cash register. I never used a square. I would charge the person for their order only when it shipped from our factory. So I never actually like took anybody's payment while I was at the shows. So that was one thing that made me nervous. But it turns out that square is just super, super, super easy to use. And anybody who's nervous about doing it, you can figure it out. It's so easy. Even the 
tap to pay with people's phones. It was incredible, it's like magic. A little firework goes off on your phone, it's so cool. But because I have vendor experience, I was really, really excited about my display. So before the show started, I had decided to stick with a color scheme of what I wanted my display to look like. So I had ordered these tangerine kind of peachy colored tablecloths from Amazon and I'll link them down below. I decided I was gonna stick with very like peachy warm colors between light yellow and orange. And then I wanted all of my displays besides the metal hangers to be like wooden, cane, bamboo, like natural elements like that. And I love the way my display turned out. So you do see pops of black because I used that wheelbarrow that belonged to my daughter. The wheelbarrow, the wheelbarrow is black and so is the keychain rack that I had gotten at the Goodwill. And I also used a necklace holder that I just happened to have inside my bathroom. It might also be a towel holder. Now that you guys have opened my mind to like the world of towel holders, I think that the thing I thought was a necklace holder is, is a towel holder. So if you, if you know what it is, you can tell me. I don't mind being wrong. I'm wrong all the time, every day. And I loved all the baskets and containers that I used because they all were just in my house already. I didn't have to buy any of them. I'll insert some footage here of when I went around my house looking for just different display items. So welcome to the other side of the phone holder where you were just at. So this is, um, this is usually where I'm filming and this head, I think it would be kind of cool to like put things in. Maybe not right now because I can't think of anything that I would put in that head, but isn't he cool? I think I got it at Marshall's and I think I've had it for like 10 years. So sorry, it's not something that you can buy currently. I have this very beautiful basket that I keep potatoes in. That would definitely be good to use to put things inside of. It's just kind of big and I don't really know if I have enough space. Um, I have this black one that's taller that I usually keep apples in. Oh my God, that one has a bite taken out of it. And I have one pear in there that has a bite taken out of it. That has a bite taken out of it. Oh my God. There's this crazy looking like cane and wicker stool that I sit on when my daughter's coloring at her coloring table. And then here's a bunch of baskets. Uh, my daughter likes to put her little guys in there and carry them around the house. So this one is actually, this one's really, really big. Like, I don't know if I could use that one just because it's so big. This one is, that's my daughter's basket. Like she, I don't think she would let me take that one, but look how cool this one is. I got that one at the Goodwill. Yeah. This very beautiful, very thick bowl my grandmother gave me before she passed away. And I love this, I love the color of this bowl. And I just pulled out a sheet because I'm going to put this inside the wheelbarrow with like a pillow underneath of it to pad it to put things on top. Okay, people who do markets, you're gonna be amazed because I have two of these foldable shelves that I found on Facebook Marketplace like six months ago. And actually I haven't even used them yet. They've just been sitting in my garage. So it's super lightweight. I love the color of it. I love that it's like made out of cane or wood or whatever this is. And you can just lift up the shelf. It has, each shelf has hinges on it. And there's four shelves. And then after they're all lifted up, the top, the sides just fold in on each other. And it's super lightweight and it folds down really flat. Aren't those awesome? This is a product riser that my friend gave me. She had her own like little boutique and a person that she was renting a space in her boutique for like a homemade skincare line was using this and then like abandoned their line and she gave me two of them. So these two baskets are Target Threshold brand, I believe. I have a third one in my bedroom and I took them out of like this square cubby organizer that we are using those baskets to hold our shoes in, but they don't stink. <laughs> so I just gathered some more baskets from around my house. All these things like had stuff in them. Like I was using these baskets for stuff and I just made piles everywhere. And then back here, here is the spray painted towel holder. See, it came out pretty. Oh, what's that such a, I don't know. It looks like it has some yarn fluff on it. Okay, well, spray painted the block to match the key chain, key chain rack. 
So I got this sign printed at Walgreens. This print is printed on like a thick cardstock so it can stand by itself. And I just went really basic. I only included my Instagram logo because I figured I can just tell people in person, like they can DM me if they wanna do like custom order or something. And honestly, I didn't wanna like include my YouTube link or anything like that because I feel weird about like promoting myself, but also I don't have an online store or anything. So I just kept it simple with the link to my Instagram. But I'm really happy with the poster board and it was only $8. I used a coupon in my Walgreens emails and it was eight bucks. So this is a little bit back and forth, but I wanna at least keep this part of my original video where I showed you what happened with my cactuses because I know a lot of people were asking how they turned out and I also took your guys' suggestion to use flowers and I think they turned out really pretty. And I'm gonna insert some footage here from before I got all negative and whiny and, and then I'll come back to this Quinn. Let me also show you how the cactuses turned out. So I took your guys' advice and I added flowers. Let me know how you feel about them. Well, actually, by the time you see this, it's gonna be too late, but I hope you like them. I made this little collection with a tiny barrel cactus and a yellow puff flower, and then a smaller moonstone, a succulent, and some string of pearls. The succulents and the flower are made from Michael's Home Slim. And then the green is the same as the other cactuses where it's that yarn I don't know the name of from Amazon that I got the recommendation from the Faded Wildflower. And the base, I use this no-name white yarn that I had in my stash already. I have like a lot of donated yarn to me that's not, that doesn't have the tag on it anymore. So I don't know like the brand or anything. So the way that I, I should have like taken a video when I was assembling it, but I totally forgot. So I made the base, which was just a big magic circle disc. And then after I crocheted each one of the pieces, I just did a couple stitches into the base. And then the pot is full of fluff. It's full of polyfill. So for these smaller cactuses, I didn't use pool noodles or skewers or anything like that. And I just laid the base on top of the polyfill, on top of the polyfill. And then I hot glued, let's see if I can kind of show where it connects. And then I hot glued as close as I could in between the chain stitches on the outside to the pot. So I did that by curling up the big round disc, putting the hot glue down and then and then I used a needle to squish it against the hot glue. And I just held it in place for a few seconds and I haven't had any trouble with them coming off of the clay pots yet. The one pot I was having trouble with was this one. So I think because this pot is like a glazed ceramic, this was having a harder time with the hot glue because there's no like porous surface for the glue to attach to. But I have had to hot glue this again, but hopefully I think now it's holding up. And this is what it looks like. Sorry, I'm not even showing you what it looks like. So this one, I put four flowers on. I did pink puff flowers. And these are the same flowers that are on the headbands. And then um, Home Slim, Michael's Home Slim String of Pearls, which I think the String of Pearls are really fun. But I think this is cute. Do you guys like this one? I totally forgot to mention, I made little spikes on the cactus. So if you look closely, here I'll get really close to the lens. I made little spikes and I used scrubby yarn. Like if you've ever made a dish scrubby, grab one of the yarns so you can see what it looks like. This is Red Heart Scrubby Cotton and it has this awesome, awesome texture. There's spuds on it. it. has this awesome texture and you use it to make dish scrubbies. So I didn't have a white one already, so I just used one that I already had open. I just cut where the white segment was and I used that to make the prickles on the cactus. And this was a recommendation in that book I rented from the library and I think it came out so cool. I love the texture that it gives. So I'm gonna answer some footage of me in my carport doing like a mock setup. I think you can probably tell that I'm super stressed out because I was trying to do a mock setup with the tables while my mother-in-law was inside watching my daughter. And I'm so, so thankful that she was here watching her that day because my daughter was so fuzzy and just not, she wasn't having a good time. And I don't know if it's like that thing with dogs, how people always say that dogs can pick up on your emotions. Babies can too, because she knew that I was getting stressed out and that was making her fussier. And she was 
it was one of those moods where like she wouldn't let me leave her side if i if if i wasn't in eyesight she would start screaming but luckily my mother-in-law is like one of her favorite people in the entire world if not her favorite person in the entire world and i'm so so thankful that she was here that day to help watch her and i felt like she was in good hands another really nice thing that my mother-in-law did was while my daughter was taking a nap that day she my mother-in-law put price tags on my bigger item which was so nice of her because I'm sure that took a very long time and I really appreciate it. Some of the price tags I decided later to change so I think at my next show I might have to cut some of those off and change the price. So I spent some time inside my dirty carport working on my mock setup for my tables and I had decided to go with a Z formation which I will put a picture of here if you're not familiar with that. I chose the Z formation because I was going to be in a corner spot and I was super excited that for my first market ever, I was gonna be inside a corner spot because there's a lot of cool table formations that you can do with a corner spot. And you can probably pick up on how stressed out I was. So this is where I am so far. I love these tablecloths. They're so easy to put on, so pretty. Um, nothing is really set up yet. This is just like kind of all thrown on the table. I think this side is good. I don't think I'm gonna change anything right here. I just need to bring in one of those wooden signs so that I can see if it fits underneath the flowers. And in my arms, there's a bunch of other stuff that I just grabbed from inside. Okay, this is the final setup, I think. So you're gonna come in from this side, hopefully. Wheelbarrow cactuses. I have these four vases of flowers. I do have lavender, but maybe I will just save the lavender for the wildflower festival since there's not a lot of room on the table. And I think these colors kind of look really nice together. Like I like the sunflowers with the cactus and then these three vases kind of all match each other. I probably won't use, I don't know. I don't know about that sign yet. Then we go into bees and worm. So this chalkboard sign will have the prices for the coasters and the headbands on it. Go into my big old sign. This is the Easter area. So I'll make some more tiny birds tonight and stuff them into eggs. I wish I had like fake hay that was tan that I could put right here. But I'll see if I have like a different basket I can use. Then we have safety warning sign. This chalkboard sign will have the price for the possums. Oh my goodness. Oh my gracious. Okay. This will have the price for the possums and small animals. I'll probably just put little critters as the name of them. And then it moves over to chickens. Um, that chalkboard sign will have the price for the hatching chicks and the handheld side chickens. I think they're gonna be two different prices because I think those are gonna be like 15. And then we move to all the sea creatures. Um, I put the penguin on the bottom because he's light. So it draws your eye to the bottom to have like white down there. Chalkboard sign for the tortoises. I don't need to have as many stacked up right there as I, as I do right now. I can just like keep some behind the table and refill it if anybody buys them. But I like this. I'm gonna keep it like this and see how this layout goes. I like the Z-shaped layout. My sign got a little bit dirty when it fell on the ground earlier, but that's okay. And also my husband's absolutely gonna die when he realizes that's not centered. Oh, and he's really gonna die for sure when he sees that I put a period at the end of toys, but I didn't put a period at the end of tear. <gasps> He's literally, he's gonna have a heart attack. So now we get to the day of the market. So I had stayed up super late that night making last minute things. Um, one of the last minute things I made was a big orange chicken to go with my two black chickens. And I also made, so made five of the Andy Light Creations little birds because I wanted to put those birds inside Easter eggs and sell them as like little mystery duck. Spoiler alert. They were very popular and kids really like that little pattern and also it fits perfectly inside an Easter egg. I wanted to be one of those really cool YouTubers that will tell you what's sold and then like put up a picture of exactly the item. 
but I didn't have time to take pictures. So I took pictures at the marketplace while they were on the displays, but it doesn't look very nice. And next time I know that I will do better. So I definitely learned a lot from this market and next time I'll do better. So let's jump to market day. Some of the footage I'm gonna have to cut out because there was copyright music playing. There was also this speaker that was so loud every time somebody got up to announce something, it was just blaring at me. And I hope you like looking up my nose for like the next 10 minutes. Hi, welcome to market day. So my daddy's on his way here. Um, he has a truck and our car is pretty small. Plus my husband's gonna be using our car to take my daughter to an Easter bunny event this morning. And then hopefully after it, they'll come see me at the market. So waiting for my dad to get here. I still need to brush my hair and I just wanted to show my outfit. So I only have one shoe on cause I'm looking for another sock, but I have my favorite comfy shoes. Um, they're Allegra, Allegra, Allegria, I think is how you say it. I bought them on eBay. They're very expensive brand new. So I bought them on eBay. Um, I have on a skirt with pockets, nice and comfy. This is actually a shoulder strap purse that I got on Temu with a banana on it. And I'm wearing it around my waist. I know a lot of people wear it like over their um, their chest to like for their money bags, but like I have big boobs and I don't, I don't know. So I'm wearing it on my waist. It has my cash in it, a power bank, uh, my card reader, my phone. And then I'm also bringing super glue in case anything happens with the safety eyes. They shouldn't because I've been tugging on those suckers. So they should all be good. And then I also have chapstick and I hope I don't get the super. And I also have chapstick because I'm one of those people that's just like constantly reapplying chapstick throughout the day. And I think I'm good. Um, I'm gonna go over my list one more time. Hair in my mouth. And we can go over my list one more time and I think we're good. So my dad can't stay for setup because he's busy, but that's fine. I can totally do setup by myself. And I'm excited, so I'll see you there. I should have made my husband get my daughter out of her high chair because now I have to change my shirt. So I'm at the event. It's 8.30, it start, we have to be set up in one hour. And um, I forgot to wear deodorant today, so we'll see how that ends up going. This is my spot. Um, it doesn't look like I have that much stuff, but I'm gonna try to set up and make it look nice within an hour. And also I stink, I stink. Bye. <laughs> okay, so I just finished setting up. Uh, maybe I should put my headphones in. I don't know if you'll be over here. I changed a lot of the layout once I got here because going off like the height of the tables next to me, I didn't want to have low table on the other side. So this side is the same. Cactuses, flowers. I'm gonna quickly make a price sign for the flowers right here. And then we go into the bees. I made a little sign for the basket. We got Wallace in his throne. We got my headbands and coasters. Bookmarks and a book to demonstrate. So this is what I changed. I moved the chickens to this middle area because I thought there was too much going on on like the stuffed animals under the table. So I wish I had more stuff to put on the top. That it's kind of bumming me out, but it's okay. See, if I had that sign that said like about cat cake or like these items are handmade by me and inspired by my daughter or whatever, I would have put it right there in the center. So moving on. We have car hangers. Oh, also I'm gonna make some individual tags for those hatching chicks real fast. Um, car hangers, I move right here. I move the keychains over here so they'd be closer to like the other stuffed yeah. animals. Oh, thank you. Easter <laughs> ride around the corner. Yeah. So, this is like the stuffed animal area. So we have like the Easter section, possums. I don't know why I just put them in the front. So, little critters. <laughs> kind of bummed that I don't have the ones that my daughter stole, but it's okay. Next time, you know, I'm just learning. Like, this is my first one. I'm not gonna, like, beat myself up. 
Um, the small sea turtles, I need to make a, I need to make custom tags for, and then the small turtles on the bottom, I can refill as if they get empty. Where my booth is, I'm on the corner. So there's a walkway down here. There's a walkway right here. This is that freeze-dried candy company that I'm gonna do an event with next time. We have another crochet artist. She's super, super sweet. Her name is Shannon. I don't know the name of her company. Oh yeah, I do know the name of the company. It's called Yarnet. And she's very talented. She has like the most beautiful dragon shawls. Dragon shawls, oh my gosh. Okay. And um, nobody else is set up yet. Maybe once everybody's set up, I will um, walk around. We're supposed to be done setting up in like the next five minutes and it looks like a lot of people still have stuff left to do. Is there nobody behind me? Hi puppy. Okay, check in later. So I forgot to film this at home, but. So I made this little one and I put a mustard colored flower on it. I think it looks very, very cute. This is the big boy. I didn't put a flower on him because I like the way that he looked and also somebody commented and said that they live in the desert and he looks like a real cactus. So the only thing I added was, this is scrubby yarn, like what you would use to make like dish scrubbies with. And I just um, did a slip stitch and then knotted it to make spikes. And I did that on all the cactuses. It looks a little bit better on the um, Chanel cactuses. <laughs> you know, the, the word I can't say, sorry. Um, I added a flower to the barrel one, like somebody commented. I like that somebody said that they like this color cactus. I like it too. And then this big guy, I put four flowers on him. I don't know if that's too much. I don't know if it looks silly, but we'll see. Um, the prices for the flowers, I haven't thought about it. I need to make the sign. Okay. Feel free to tear me to shreds about how ugly this sign turned out. I'm so sorry. This was obviously made in last minute. Um, I don't even know if I really like priced the flowers correctly. Well, I know I didn't, and now it's too late to change it. So. This is fine, I'm fine. I actually wanted to make the flowers like kind of expensive so I didn't have to make any more for the wildflower festival, but it's fine. It's fine, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, I made a new sign. I flipped it over. You can absolutely destroy me. Just, just, just tell me how horrible this looks. I can take it. Tell me how ugly it is. Tell me how awful it is. Tell me how stupid it is. I changed my price last minute. Um, tell me how amateur and ugly this looks with the. Just yeah, just rip me to shreds. Do it. I deserve it. I can take it. The map. It showed that there was somebody like in the booth directly in front of me, and there's nobody there yet. So I don't even know if anybody's coming. If nobody comes, I guess you can like see my booth a little bit better. But it's a little different than I thought because in my mind, for some reason, I thought that there was gonna be like um, curtain like segments, uh, curtain like dividers in between the booths and there's not. So we're all like in this basketball court and you could just like see all the way from one end to the other. Uh, my booth is facing this like, uh, what are those things called? It's facing the projector and they're like showing a video on a loop and every time the video starts restarts, it's so loud and it's like this like acoustic guitar playing and it's like ah, and it's very, very loud. It's like an angel is descending every single time the video starts. But I'm glad that I uh, talked to the other vendors. So I'm not so nervous now if I have to go pee then I'll have somebody to talk to. Oh, I forgot to put my headband on. Okay, so I'm gonna put my headband on. There's a few people walking around now, so I will check in in one hour. Okay, so there's no dividers, so it's kind of nice because when people walk in, they can just like see straight across the room. So, I have my head put down. I see one person I went to high school with. That's probably gonna happen a lot. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think I'll do like hourly check in and see how it goes. Also, I'm second guessing all my prices because the crochet artist that's next to me, her prices are so much lower than mine. But that's okay. Okay, bye. So this is the back of my tooth. And I really like these tablecloths. I like that you can like hide things underneath of it. So I should have my, my empty bins are like shoved under there. And this is the, I was gonna like sit on this um, wicker stool. And I even like used it, um, 
on my table before I changed it, but my dad brought me this folding chair so I can sit in, and I like how it totally matches everything. Everything looks very like 70s, which I like. Um, one thing about the sign, my Walgreens sign, is that I feel like I can't see anything when I'm so, so I'm sitting right here. I'm sitting, this is like my view, like in between the chickens, but I have like this big block where the sign is, which is okay because I'll, you know, in the future, hopefully I'll have something else. But I do, I like standing up here so I can like look around the table and like talk to people when they're like looking at stuff. Um, oh, I wanted to show what happened with the spray painted bases. So every time that they rub up against something, the spray paint is like chipping off. Like they did, the vases did come out really, really nice. And I like the look that they look all terracotta colored, but yeah, the spray paint is like definitely not holding up. I should have had, I should have used that clear sealer that was inside my garage, the matte finish sealer. I bet that would have helped make them hold up better. Um, my sister in law's already telling me that I should charge more for the cactuses. She said that this one. That's thirty dollars. Should be fifty. That's what she said. She said that one should be fifty, and that this one should be more. I don't know how much she thinks the big guy should be. But my baby's here, so hi. Okay, I'm a little bit late checking in because it's actually been kind of busy. Um, I've been writing down my sales because I actually ended up like not using the square inventory tracker because I just I ran out of time. My daughter's been super super fussy this week. Um, it's just. There was a lot of things that I wish I could have done, but I didn't have time to do it, so I'm just doing the best I can, you know? But I've been getting a lot of compliments, um, and I made a lot of sales so far, so let's see how many, let's see how many sales I had. My very first sale that I did today was for a mystery duck egg. So one of um, Andy Light Creations little ducks, and it was actually a little white duck with a yellow beak. And so far I've sold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighteen. So, so far I've had 18 sales. I've sold um, a couple flowers. I think I did two sunflowers and three roses. So far nobody's bought any of the lilies. I've sold three chickens, I think. Um, I sold two keychains. Trying to think of like things that were, like things that have been the most popular items so far. Um, I sold two of the little critters. I sold a Highland cow and a little cat. But everyone's really nice. Okay, so it's 1230. Just cleaning up a little bit. Wanna make sure everything looks nice. No one's interested in the Easter stuff. That's okay. Um, I wanted to rearrange the keychains. I'm really happy with this keychain rack. I think it worked out perfectly. I don't want too much from sex each other. So I'm sold those strawberries. I really like the colors when it was all together. Um, I like how bright it is. It's like very eye-catching, I think. So we're out of strawberries. The car hangers have gotten a lot of attention. Let's go with one of these pigs in the front. chicken display. Wallace is getting a lot of love. Lots of people comment on him and say how cute he is. No one's pulled a gun yet. No one's handed over a 20 for him, but that's okay because I'll keep him forever. And I need to make more bees. You guys, Wallace just sold. He sold to this girl that kept coming back and looking at him. She kept saying, I have to have the worm. I, she was picking him up and petting him and stuff, so I'm really glad that she loved him so much. She came back with a $20 bill and she bought him. So he's gone. His throne is empty. I have to put somebody else there. So I put the like, bunny inside Wallace's throne. Aww, I miss him already. Oh my gosh, the little cutest little girl. All the kids here have their faces painted, and I wish I could take videos of them because the face painter is like doing such an amazing job. There's little kids that like look straight up like reptilian creatures, <laughs> and some of them are like scary. Like this lady's not going for cute animals; she's going for realistic animals. 
awesome. I hope you like this view, but I don't have anything in my nose. Okay, oh, deodorant update. Do I stink? Let's find out. Let's like have really casually do this. Do I have like some pit stains? Um, this presentation's very, very loud. I don't know why the, I don't know why the, I don't know why it's so loud. This building's not that big. So the guy who's doing the presentation is about to read the Lorax again. He read it earlier. Um, I like that I'm like right in front of the projector because then I have something to look at. Also, it's very, very loud. So I don't know what I can do. I can slow down a little bit. So I just made this chicken keychain, but the only eyebrow balls that I brought with us, the only eyeballs that I brought with me were from this mason jar that I got at a yard sale. That's this teddy bear eyes. And they're all crazy looking. talking about bacteria and insects. We moved the sunflower turtle to the front table so that people would look at it. I can't believe I just forgot to put our x bottles. That's fine. That's fine. Um, we're down to four eggs. Hi! So, 2.30 check-in. Um, it looks, I think the traffic has like slowed a little bit, but I still have made some sales. Let me see what I've sold in like the last uh, like half hour. Let me see. I'm all out of chickens now. So I sold all the chickens except for one one chicken keychain. It's like the the orange speckled chicken keychain. That's the very, very last chicken that I have. Um, no one has bought in a single one of the hatching chicks. Lots of people look at them and lots of people like want to see how the, the chick comes out, but nobody has bought one yet. Um, I sold five bookmarks. Five? Five or four? Maybe it was only three. I sold three bookmarks. So that's cool. Um, that makes me happy. Like on the inside, that's that people were buying bookmarks. So I feel very like, it's like very open. I feel very vulnerable because I'm just... Like I feel like the second you walk in, you can see like the back of my booth and you can see like my body and my hair. And then if you walk in that way, then you're coming in like the front of my booth. Everybody's super, super nice. Um, at the time I've been like talking to other vendors, my family came and visited me, my niece came. So that's been nice. Um, I think this was a really, really good event to be my first one because it wasn't as, it wasn't like super scary. It wasn't super intimidating. And also I forgot to say that the, the event coordinator of this event that I'm at right now is another mom from the library play group where my daughter goes for story time. Isn't that cool? I had no idea. So that's, I, I live in a very small town, obviously. Okay, bye. Okay, let's check in. It's not quite four, but everybody else is tearing down, so I guess I can start tearing down too. So one cactus. It was the green, it was like the dark green one. Um, I sold half the sunflowers I brought. I sold a few days. Um, this is how everything's looking. I have three bookmarks left. This is how everything looks. I'm almost out of keychains. I just sold two axolotls. I think I have another axolotl under the table. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's how it looks. So it seems kind of weird that everybody's turning down early, but that's okay. Um, I had a really good time. I talked to a lot of other vendors and I got some business cards and stuff. And 
Someone from the Chambers of Commerce asked me if I wanted to join them. I don't know what they do. It's like a special business club or something. Yeah, so here's the event. I didn't get it. I never got to walk around and look at the other booths. But I know everybody's like tearing down. So there were some really cool bonsais that I wanted to look at. And now they're packing up. Okay, my feet are getting trapped in yarn. So I guess I'm gonna start tearing down and my daddy's gonna come help me get all my tables and stuff. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but the linemen from the linemen's of my town volunteer to help people like carry their tables in and out of the building, so it's really cool. Okay, so I have some notes written down that I wanna go over. So the first part is things that I would have liked to do differently next time. Obviously, I want to make my signs at home before I go to the market. And I want to paint over my horrible, horrible permanent marker mess that I made on my like cool arch sign with the flower prices. It's not embarrassing that I changed my flower prices, but you know what? I didn't have a single person tell me that my prices were too high. I sold 10 flowers. So I know that's not a lot of flowers to sell, but I still sold 10 of them. Maybe I would... Maybe I would have sold more flowers if the prices were lower, but I put a lot of work into those and they take a long time to make. I definitely next time want to have a sign that says something about how these products are handmade and local because I had a lot of people ask me if I lived in the area, which might just be something that people ask when you live in a small town. I know I mentioned before that I wanted to create this sign that says something about like about cat cake that I'm a mom that's inspired by my daughter and that I'm local and everything is handmade. And it's not to like tug at people's heartstrings or to guilt people into buying from me if they know that I'm a mom. I actually had somebody come up to me and ask me if I was importing a lot of my items. So he held up one of the coasters and he pointed to the flowers and he asked me if I had imported those, which no, I did not. I, I painstakingly handmade them, most of them at 10 o'clock at night while I was tired. Luckily, that was probably the only negative comment that I had the entire day. Another thing that I'd also like to bring in the future is an example of how the safety eyes are put into the stuffed animals. So I had printed out a sign that I had made on Canva, which I'll put a picture of here, but I did show it. Just copied some wording that I found on Google when I looked up safety eye warning. But because I had that warning, I did have some, a couple parents ask me about the safety eyes. And I can tell by the look on their faces that when I explained how the safety eyes were put on, they didn't really understand. And maybe other parents out there aren't constantly repairing stuffed animals that their dogs tear apart like I am, but I don't think people know that when you buy a stuffed animal from a store, it has safety eyes on it. Like they have the same type of backing that we're using when we make amigurumi. So in the future, I'd like to bring maybe an unstuffed bird or something, like something small, that has the safety eyes put in it so that they can see how the backing goes on and tug on it from the back and everything and realize like that they're pretty safe. So if I do have time in the future, I'd love to also make some loveys or things that don't have safety eyes and my embroidering skills so that I can get better at making embroidered eyes. So even though I had so many lists and I thought that I had gone over them the day of the market, I forgot to bring some bouquet bags from Temu. And when somebody purchased flowers, my plan was to put them inside the bags and then tie them with a ribbon. And I left the bags and the ribbon at home. And nobody asked for a bag or anything when they bought the flowers. So I guess that that was okay, but I am pretty bummed that I didn't have those that day. Another thing that I wish I had brought was deodorant and hand lotion. <laughs> and that's self-explanatory. Another thing is just extra risers. Like I should have gone around my house and just found anything that kind of fit the color scheme to bring with me. As products were being sold, I could have like lifted up or changed the way that the tables looked because I felt like I felt really stuck with the way I had it. I also wish that I had printed out a sign of the events that I would be at next because I did have people ask me if I don't buy it now, where will I see you next? And of course I told people to reach out to me on Instagram, but a lot of people didn't even scan the QR code on my sign. They were just standing in front of me with their phones and they would type in my name on Instagram and find me. So now that I am booked for a few markets coming up, I'd like to actually make a sign that says where I'll be, like where you can find me next. Speaking of that, let's jump into the good things that happened at the market. So one of the most exciting things that happened was that I was invited to be a vendor at an endangered species fair in Chico, California on April 20th. And I'm so excited about it. It sounds like it's a really, really awesome event. The one from the fair just happened to be at the Arbor Day Festival and they invited me to have a table. And it sounds like it's gonna be really cool. They said that there's gonna be like 
paper mache masks of animals doing a parade and there's gonna be a petting zoo and it just sounds like it's super kid friendly. I really want my husband to take my daughter that day. And I'd love to make some stuffed animals of endangered species found in California. I also got a custom order for a pug, which I'm excited to make because I have a French bulldog and they're very similar. I was also asked to join the Chamber of Commerce and I would love if other people who, people who do crochet events can tell me if you are a member of your local Chamber of Commerce because I don't even know what they do. Okay, so I know a lot of people are very interested in the numbers and I'll just get into kind of totals about which items sold. It's a six hour event from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Although people did start tearing down early at like 3.30. And during that time, I sold a total of 55 items. I made a total of $467, 219 of which were through Square and 248 was cash. I paid $40 for my booth fee and I paid roughly $7.50 in square fees. I didn't purchase anything from other vendors because I didn't have time to leave my booth. And I also didn't purchase any lunch that day. And I also didn't pay for gas because my dad drove me. <laughs> so minus my booth fee and the fee that Square took out, my total profit was $427. So you guys are gonna have to tell me if you like videos where people individually break down every single item that's sold. And I'm sorry that I don't have like individual photos of every single item, but I'm gonna do my best. So I think one of the big hits of the day was the mystery eggs. I sold five mystery eggs for $5 and they happened to be my very first sale of the day was for a mystery egg. The mystery eggs also made kids keep coming back to my booth because they would run up to me and ask me if anybody else had purchased a mystery egg. And then they would ask me what was inside of it as if like I didn't know what was already inside the egg. But it was very cute and a lot of the kids at the event were Girl Scouts, so that was even cuter. After so many people told me to market prep turtles, I only sold two turtles during the entire event. And they were both the smaller standing tortoise one from the free Instagram pattern. And I sold those each for $7. Car hangers I was selling for $12 and I sold both of the white ducks that I had made the night before the market. And I sold one bee. And I was right about people not wanting to take things off of a hanger that's behind another thing because the car hangers kind of just turned into a jumble mess. When people were trying to pick up the pig, they would grab it and it would pull all the other hangers off. And I think for the next show, I will definitely be having to find something else that I can use besides a toilet paper holder slash towel holder. Out of the little critter designs, I sold seven of them. Two of them were Highland cows. One was a dairy cow. One was the gray cat that I had made up. I sold the little black bear with the holes in his ears. I only sold one pig. I sold my brown puppy. And I still never found the other four little critters that I was missing that my daughter was playing with. They're somewhere lost in my house somewhere. One of the big sellers at the event was chickens. I ran out of chickens. So I am like in the farming area, so that was to be expected, I think. The person who bought the mama chicken that had the little chicken side of it, was wearing a purse that looked exactly like that chicken and she let me take a picture so I'll put it up here. She was so excited to find that chicken and I was so excited that she was buying it. I didn't sell any of the hatching chick pattern which I thought was going to be a big hit but I did sell all the chickens that I made. I also sold out of all of the five sitting bead patterns that I had made and the last two to sell were the brown ones. Those were the ones that I liked so the first three that sold were all black and I sold the sitting bees for eight dollars each. The keychains I sold for $8 each and I sold all three strawberry keychains that I had made. Those were ones that I had just freehanded. I sold one small black chicken keychain that I had freehanded and I sold one frog from the free Instagram pattern and I sold one mushroom that I had freehanded. I also sold the hammerhead shark that I had made to the person who invited me to join the endangered species fair. That's really cool that he went home with somebody that I'll see again. I brought five possums with me and I sold two of them. The possums were really popular as in people talked about them and picked them up and touched them and stuff, but I only sold two of them. I had made some bookmarks, which came from free YouTube patterns, which I will link down below. I made five sprout bookmarks and five flower bookmarks. The flowers I was selling for $8 just because they took a little bit more time. And the sprout bookmarks I was selling for five. I didn't want to have anything in my booth that was lower than $5. Sales, I ended up selling two flower bookmarks for $8 each and I sold three sprouts for $5. I sold one cactus and it was the bright green cactus that I had made with posh yarn. I'll put a picture. The cactuses really brought in people. Like everybody, 
everyone who passed by came and talked about them. People were touching them. I had people ask if they could take photographs of them. I had a group of teenage girls stop and take selfies in front of all my flowers and cactuses. It was really cute. If you're curious how the flowers did, I only sold two lilies, which were a higher price point. I had changed the price of the lilies to $15. And out of the roses and the sunflowers, I sold four each for $10 a piece. I sold two red roses and two pink roses and four sunflowers. All right, let me tell you guys about Wallace. So my mother-in-law had put a price tag of $20 on Wallace. I know that there's debate about pricing handmade items. I know that some people stick with pricing things low because you want to send out your items in the world and have more people enjoy them. But I And I know that some people price things high because they want to be paid fairly for the amount of work that they did. I guess I'm somewhere in between because I want to share my creations with the world, but also I don't make any money and I really want to buy my daughter a jungle gym. I stuck with the $20 price tag on Wallace and honestly he didn't get much attention from any of the passers-by some people like commented saying like oh is that a worm in the chair that's funny but there was one girl one very special girl that kept coming back over and over again to visit wallace and she would come back and she would kind of like look at him a little bit and then she would come back and she would touch him and then finally she came back with a 20 dollar bill and said she could not stop thinking about that worm and I told her that his name was Wallace and she said that she will remember it and she will keep his name. So that was very special because I feel like he did go to somebody who actually appreciated him. <laughs> so now that the market is over, I took a day to relax my hands and kind of like de-stress. And now I am busy planning for my next event, which is the spring fling on March 30th. And, and I definitely know that now I need to make more chickens and more bees. So even though the market didn't go exactly the way I wanted, I still feel like I had a very successful day. I made a lot of sales and made connections at the event with other vendors. And I feel like I kind of did get my name out there with some of the local people in my town because everyone was kind of curious, why is your name Cat Cake? And I actually never even mentioned it on this channel, but my name is Cat Cake because that's how my daughter for her entire life has said cupcake. It's forever gonna be one of those sound bites that's just drilled in my head of picturing my daughter a little bit younger than she is now, standing in the kitchen screaming, Mama, what? Cat Cake! And it just makes me happy. I decided to call this Cat Cake because it's silly and it reminds me of my daughter and everything that I do is for her. I guess I'm going to start prepping for my next market and the one after that and the one after that and we'll see what happens. I, I know eventually the smart thing to do would be to make some type of online store, but I don't know if I have the mental energy to work on that right now. If you watch this entire video, thank you so much and I'll see you next week. Besides that one, besides one orange speckled, besides one orange speckled chicken keep gold chicken cheek one orange speckled chicken keychain chicken keychain that was very hard